to be making and showing you how and it's going to be a long video uh, sorry but dip pens homemade dip pens they work really good for a lot of different things sketching with brilliant <gasps> okay sorry about that Tried to sorry about my chair squeaking as well. I've tried to record this a few times. Uh, recorded it setting fast forward. Not good. That was the last time. Right. You need a twig, which is what these are, off a tree plant bush that grows very quickly within its growing season. One that gardeners usually chop back at the end of the season and then they grow like crazy because usually that kind of bush, tree, whatever, has a hollow centre. It has something called pith inside it, which is like a spongy um, sugar puff, like what's inside of popcorn type of material inside down inside. This one is um, willow, um, a weaving willow. If you know anybody who weaves willow, they usually get rid of pieces like this because they're too thick at this end, even after soaking, they're too thick to weave. So if it's too small to use as one of the uprights, for the other weaving to go around and they've got enough gap savers because you put these in as gap savers for when you're locking something in afterwards but anyway um, they usually throw pieces like this away and you know and it has the emptyish centre these do have quite a thick wall around them <coughs> excuse me right so basically what you really need to remember, which I didn't make in a couple of those, is put it in your hand, make it straight at the bottom, so it's approximately where the end will be, because that does have a difference, believe me. If you measure it here and then chop it up here, it could be way different by the time you're holding it, because your hand's moving further back. So hold it where you think you're going to be holding it, and pretend to write with it. It will find its natural position which is best for your hand to hold it. It doesn't matter which way up you like it looking. And then you need to put a line so you know that that's facing upwards. Then roll it around in your hand, shut your eyes, turn your head away, whatever. Just get hold of it. Pretend you're writing with it. Make sure it feels right. It's going to feel a bit rocky because you've got it on a, a round rather than a... But it's this bit that you're concentrating on. And yes, I have got my head turned away. Right. So there again, that line is still at the top. So my best guess is that this is going to be a good place to have the top. So... This is your twig. What we're going to be doing is cutting it at an angle and getting rid of this bit. And this is where the pith in the centre is. So what, we have, what we're after is looking at it from this direction. It will then look like... No, I'm drawing it soon. <laughs> Sorry. It will then look like that and that 
is a channel where the pith is. So we're going to put that piece of cardboard. Where's my cardboard gone? I don't want to cut through onto me mat and what I use and I use a lot I use it for a lot of things blue tack blue tack it down so it's not going to move and use it as a prop itself right that line I'm going to draw further back and make sure that I've definitely got a line because the um, in fact you could put a little mark there because blue tack will take it's like an er eraser it will take your line away so you need to put it down, see, see the line on the blue tag, that's come off there, line down, hold it best you can in the position that's right and then take off. cutting away from you and with the grain don't cut towards the grain and if you slide your hand on the desk try and keep it in contact with the desk it will stop you from slipping off use your wrist movements like this rather than your arm movements then if you slip you can only go as far as your hand can go rather than the entire arm you need a good sharp blade that's thin skinny like a scalpel blade is perfect making sure that i'm taking it off level with this line Okay, right, this pith, all this I could do with getting some of that out. What I found is good is a drill bit, that one's a bit big, but a piece of wire that you've, a, a straight, like a um, paper clip that chomp it in the um, you know players have like teeth on them if you rough it up with the teeth of the players so it, it feels a bit a bit like a file um, that can clear out holes and you can use it as a file because that's basically what you've made is a file if you nip your wire off at an angle as well that kind of angle you can use it as a drill as sorts 
you don't need to go too far up inside it and I cleared it out to there so but just scratch it out whichever way you can okay right you need to decide how narrow or wide your tip that will be making contact with the paper you need to decide on how wide you want your line to be once you've inked and drawn oh, I don't really want a right wide one that one is quite wide um, so you don't have to go from right back here just do it from you know halfway down just thin it down a little bit and then I'm doing this bit here I'll do it exaggerated That's what we've got at the moment, a long thing like that. So I'm taking these corners off but keeping it flat here. I'm just taking these corners off a little bit to how wide I want that. If you're bothered about what it looks like then spend more time you know making sure that you're going from the same point here to the same point here all i'm really bothered about is that it works and you'll notice that the more you cut these corners away the thicker this piece of wood is because it's arched right. notice I've got my hands down they're not freely moving they're down so the, the desk is stopping me from skidding The wood gives up easier than I thought it were. I won't. If you understand what it is. Okay. That'll do. Straighten that up a little. Again, my hands are locked down to the desk whilst cutting. My line's still at the top. Just make sure, don't look at it, put it in your hand and approach whatever, you know, pretend you're writing. Yep, still comfortable. And that's moving my whole hand. Just do it moving your fingers a little bit and make sure that the pen doesn't rotate because it's, you know, not happy where it is here. But that, that feels okay. Right now we need to make this skinnier. If I draw it side on, just one second. Apparently, mix finish washing up. <laughs> um, 
this bit we need to skinny it down and you need to have a good look at it whether you want to skinny it down from here or this side um, I like it to go over a little bit so I'll probably take a little bit off here just so it gives it a nice arcish so you you're over what you're doing um, if that makes any sense and then take the rest of the thickness off here but you've got you've got to thin it down for when you do the hole through and then the line going up you know the cuts going up you're not actually cutting out any material from the line going up when you separate them you're forcing this blade in between so the wood has got to have enough thinness that when you force this it gives to allow the blade to pass through if there's not enough giving it you'll just end up crack and it might even fracture up past the hull because it's a wood and wood is like a lot of hairs crushed together all facing one direction so you start cracking it and pull it and it'll crack in this direction and it that's why it cracks in straight-ish lines and why you get sharp splintery bits it the only way I can really describe it is like a big bungle of hair that's all it's like your fingernails it's all squeezed together so hard but it's still all these little things going in one direction well little long things going in one direction that's why you can't cut up this way because you're cutting and all it's going to do is ping bits up and it, it just will not like it. It's like paper only likes to be ripped in one direction. It's the way it's been laid. Well, when you're cutting wood, you always go from small grain because there's like little tiny pieces, little tiny pieces, longer, longer, longer. So you go from small to big and it's smooth um, when you're actually wood carving with um, a gouge you can do a sideways cut which allows you to ish cut against the grain if your tools are very sharp and you know what you're doing um, but you really you, you need to go in the direction that it's happy with and when you're wood carving as well, you can actually get it to sing to you. It makes a weird whistling noise when you get it just right. It's brilliant. So. This bit a little bit maybe just a little bit Take the rest off from underneath.
Okay. You'll find some woods are more bendable than others. Plus, when you use green wood, which is wood straight from the tree, it's usually a lot easier to carve and to shape. One word of warning. Make sure whatever wood you're using is not poisonous. I know that you, you trees, the wood from you trees is not good. Sorry, it sounds like somebody's having uh, work done. So I'm just going over it with a nail file in the direction mostly of the grain. And if you want to polish it to um, a nice luster, either use an old one of these that's had most of its grit used up um, or if you do have some papers then go down in the grades and then finish off by um, rubbing it on denim denim is a really really good buffy, buffer for wood sure if a bit more of the thickness needs to come off this. You need to make sure that the end has no splinters and that it's flat that way. Right, what I've been doing is sorry. That's looking underneath it. You drill a hole and that hole is a stop to stop this split from going any further. If you need to stop a crack in something, like something plastic, a lid to something or whatnot, and it's got a crack in it, if you get the tiniest drill and drill a little hole at the very end of the crack it will stop the crack from travelling further hopefully so I drill from the inside to the outside make sure you get it in the middle. It does, if you get it slightly off it doesn't really matter. Some of these are a right mess but they still work. And 
and then what I do is when you've broke through to that side can you see the little bit sticking up if you put your drill back in carefully and just keep going in and out of your hole and push the splinters down to sort of cover the hole and then go back in with your drill it'll get rid of those splinters for you and then you can use your drill as like a little file by just pushing it to one side a little or the other side but be very gentle they're not they're not very strong well they are they're just very very thin there's not a lot there to be strong saying what I've been doing is I've been cutting a V out here and that seems to let the ink flow down more easily because it gives it a channel plus it holds more ink so when you're looking at it at the very end on this is the bit that touches the paper this end here and you have your split there what I've been doing is carving out a little tiny dip so it's got a little V in it and that seems to be helping a lot right the thinnest blade you can possibly use need to be able to see this so I've been lining it the point of the blade in the hole sort of laying the blade down so it's at the center of this bit pushing down gently whilst pulling towards myself and really you need to do this in one cut there it snaps rather than cuts it all the way but that hole stops you cut for, well you snap from going up any further let's make sure that that is all the way I think it is yep there you go that's with a knife blade in right this is the tricky bit is taking out a very fine sliver at one side see if I can lift that up without it going anywhere mm. the finest bit was down here the widest bit up at the top where the hole is and then the same from the other side
okay and to get any little pieces of fragments of wood out you can use your blue tack support underneath the It will cling to any bits that uh, you know haven't come away. Let's see how that writes. Uh, they think that oh, they think that I've got mixed up. It's not very deep. So. Can see it's drawn itself up into Don't expect it to work perfectly the first time you use it. It might need tweaking a bit. And all I do is just dip it in water and do that. Because this thin skin of ink, when it dries, it will be waterproof, which will help the pen tend to get better the more you use them. And plus wetting it um, will raise the grain so if there's any big chips that need taking off they will actually rise up while it's wet so you can see it a bit better that that needs flattening down a bit more I think that I've got an angle like that and I think it needs to be a little bit more like that rather than like that it seems to be this bit that's touching the paper and I want it to be more of this bit touching the paper
feels nicer. I know I only touch the end, but that does feel nicer. Sorry, Nick's just been for his dinner and I can't remember if this... I think it was right here, okay. quite happy with that. So there you go, you can, from the tiniest that's really blooming hard work to keep hold of, because it's so thin, but I do have um, a plan. Too wide and in betweens. I think this was the one that I made yesterday, and I didn't realise I was recording in fast forward. I quite like sketching with them. Messing about with them. So just let a bit of ink, not gallons, but let a bit of ink just seal them. Oh, that one needs chopping down. <laughs> it's ridiculously long. So, there you go. I've got plans to uh, thicken that one up a bit and have a play around with it. Hope you find it useful, hope you can follow it. Oh, you make one. Thank you. Bye.